Hello and welcome to Apello Insights episode number six. I'm Hunter Kanjian again with you today to talk about one of my favorite products. Tundra! Tundra is a proprietary blend that has been crafted to maximize yield from every angle. And it's affordable. It's got all the goods, phosphorus, potassium, amino acids, and mighty sea kelp. But for today, I'm gonna focus on one single very important element of the mix, yes, phosphorus. So close your eyes and imagine. Colossal cane colas, tremendous tantalizing tomatoes, dangerously dazz dazzling dahlias, and wicked whopping watermelons. Woo wee! As most horticulturalists already know, when it comes to big blooms, well, it's all about phosphorus and its availability and application timing. Well, how much do you really know about this element? A single atom of phosphorus has not one, not two, but five valence electrons, which means it's reactive. It's got energy. Ah, so big whoop, who cares? Well, you should. Each and every microscopic cell in your own very body is powered by a phosphoric molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And this molecule is essential for all life on this planet and maybe others. And I'm not gonna get into the glycolysis and citric acid cycle today, but if you're unfamiliar, it's worth checking those out. Okay, so let's connect the dots. When plants flower and fruit, they roll up their sleeves and work overtime. It's cell production time. So for fun, try to imagine how many individual microscopic cells it would take to make up a single paper thin family. Now imagine how many cells it would take to build up a plump, ripe, beef state tomato. That's all cell multiplication, and all that growth requires energy. ATP. Okay, sounds easy enough, right? Add P, get big blooms. Eh, wrong. Interestingly enough, even though it's critical to the plant's cellular functions, it's often considered the most difficult element for them to acquire. But why is that? Well, reason number one, I'm sure you've heard it in chemistry class, opposites attract. Soil structures are often negatively charged, and phosphoric acid is also negatively charged. Whoops, bye bye. Often this results in low, very low, phosphorus concentrations in the rhizosphere. Even well fertilized soil can have concentrations of less than 100 parts per billion. Secondly, because available phosphorus molecules are kind of big giants, plants don't absorb it through mass flow. Plants absorb phosphorus through diffusion, or simply put, instead of phosphorus getting sucked into the plant with water, the roots have to reach out and grab it and force it through a membrane. So the solution, no pun intended, is to surround all the root surface area with higher concentrations of phosphorus molecules. So the ideal way to apply phosphorus is to remove the plant from the soil dip a paintbrush in a can of phosphoric acid and brush it onto the roots. I'm joking, don't ever do that. But seriously, think about it. Most plants on a dryway basis are 0.2% phosphorus. So for simple math's sake, let's pretend to apply 100 grams of phosphorus during a crop cycle. The plant will only soak up 0.2 grams. Yikes, where did the other 99.8 grams of pea go? Well, likely, most of it leaches into our precious groundwater, rivers, and oceans. And this leaves another ugly mark on agriculture's sustainability. So my point is this, our desire for huge blooms and fruits can have an ecological consequence. And as the next generation of cultivators, it's up to us to fertilize responsibly. But don't worry, friends, that's what Impello is here for. We want you to be responsible and maximize yield. We actually want to sell you less fertilizer. There are many bloom fertilizers on the market that push 20, 30, 50% phosphorus. And it seems logical, high numbers, more P, more yield, more money. But this really causes more harm than good in the long run. And for some growers, it may seem almost impossible to get massive yields without over applying phosphorus. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. Tundra is 7% phosphorus, and that may feel like a turnoff, but let me remind you, your plants are 0.2% peat. 7%, that's 35 times the amount needed for plant growth. Tundra, although it's not an organic fertilizer, still aligns itself with sustainability. The best way to apply Tundra is frequently, 
at low concentration, zero to five milliliters per gallon in most cases. This maximizes phosphorus absorption and minimizes runoff and leaching. And I bet many of you are already one step ahead of me. There is another way to increase phosphorus absorption without increasing the concentration. You guessed it, microbes. There are numerous microorganisms well known to enhance phosphorus availability. Enter Trivis and Continuum. These bacillus products are virtuosos when it comes to grabbing phosphorus from the surrounding and then injecting it straight into the vascular system. So enough said, even if you don't use Tundra, use of our micros will boost phosphorus uptake in any cultivation method, conventional, organic, hydroponic, superponic, whatever it is, if you want big yields, do everything you can to increase the efficiency of phosphorus uptake. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something and I encourage you to learn more about the phosphorus intricacies, intricacies and delicacies. So we'll see you next time on Appello Insights and please fertilize responsibly.